Ever think about purposefully wrecking the weight on the bottom of your expensive custom mechanical keyboard? Because same. At least that's the take that some people will have on this. We are of course talking about applying custom patinas to brass and copper components. Now again, while this is a subjective thing and some people may prefer to keep their metal components looking clean on their keyboard, if you're going for more of an aged aesthetic or just something that's a little bit different on your keyboard, applying patina to brass and copper components can be a really attractive addition to the board that doesn't actually ruin anything functionally. Now there's a lot of techniques online talking about applying patinas in different ways using all manner of exotic materials up to and including ammonia and, in some instances, boiled eggs. To that end, there's a little bit of a lack of consistency in how this information is presented. So, I'm going to be presenting how to apply a patina here to a brass weight in the bottom of my Idubao ID80 Crystal Edition using techniques that I sort of amassed from the totality of my research to come to something that I feel is good for right now, but could still potentially use a little bit of work. So, let's get started. So, here's the list of materials you're going to need to use the techniques that I came up with. First, you're going to need a 3 to 1 mix of water and plant food. You can get all of this at any major hardware store, but I do definitely recommend mixing it in a squirt bottle that has pre-labeled measurements on the side of it. The bottle I got happens to also have ratio measurements on it, so it was really easy for me to set this up. You're also going to want some baking soda and metal scouring pads to make sure you can clean off any of the sealer that may exist on your on your materials and get rid of any surface grime or inconsistencies. You're also going to want salt as a catalyzer. For this experiment, we went with bigger chunks of sea salt. You're also going to want a plastic container to keep all of this in, and you're going to want something to suspend the thing you're applying patina to off the bottom of your container so that it's not just sort of sitting in a pool of stuff. Now before we get started, I just want to quickly note, this mixture of plant food and water that we're making is a smidge higher than what you would normally be using, so this is only really going to be usable for applying patinas. Now, to that end, you can make a smaller batch of your own 3 to 1 ratio of water and plant food, you're just going to need to be a little bit more careful with how you measure it. And with that, let's step outside and try applying a patina. What could possibly go wrong, right? All right, so what we've got here is everything I'm gonna be using for my first attempt at applying a forced patina. Again, our subject is this brass weight from underneath my Idubao ID80 crystal. It's almost a shame to experiment on this thing. It's very pretty as is, but you know, science. So first thing you can see I'm wearing gloves. I don't want to get any of my skin oils on the metal, especially after I start uh, sanding down the surface. Uh, skin oils are just going to do weird things to the patina. It may not come out right, so want to avoid that. And to start, I'm just going to get a little bit of water on my little rag here. This is just an old sock that I just cleaned and repurposed as a rag, and I'll wipe down the weight. All right, now from here, I'm gonna take a little bit of this baking soda, sprinkle that along the top up here. Then I'm going to take this number 0000 wire uh, scrub pad thing and give the top a nice scrub. Now you wanna make sure as you're running this along the weight that you're running with the grain of the brass or the copper, depending on which metal you're using, but you wanna go with the grain. Going against it will create some kind of strange looking, uh, potentially undesirable effects. So again, just wanna make sure you're sanding with the grain of the metal. Now I've done this maybe a touch more than I should, but again, I'm not entirely sure. This is the first time I'm doing this. But yeah, that looks pretty good right now. So next step is going to be to set this down inside this container on top of these two little uh, rinse cups that we've got right here. Then I'm gonna spray it down with this. This is a three to one mixture of plant food and water. Uh, do not just arbitrarily dispose of this when you're done with it. Uh, do not just 
uh, soak your plants with it. You will kill them if something living ingests this. At the very least, they will get very ill. Um, yeah, just do not mess around with this. Yeah, that's funny. I wonder how long the mic cable's been in the shot. But if I've read all of my directions correctly, the next step is to spray this down and uh, let it sit. We can tell the bottom of this is not a hundred percent even, but the idea now is to just let this sit somewhere where pets, small children, or someone else who may not know any better uh, won't have access to it. And uh, in 24 hours, we should have something uh, kind of funky looking. So after the first 24 hours, I wasn't really vibing with what I had. It was way too subtle an effect, and judging by the look of the weight, it looked as though I didn't scrape off enough of the original sealer that was on the weight. So I rinsed everything off, took the baking soda and the metal scouring pad to it again, made sure that I got all of the sealer off this time, and then reapplied the salt in the plant food mixture. This time I went significantly heavier with salt application and had a finer mist setting on the squirt bottle to make sure I wasn't knocking any of the salt off as I was spraying the weight. Then I let it sit for 48 hours before I rinsed it and sealed it. The end result? Yeah, I'm kind of happy with the end result here. It's still kind of subtle and subdued compared to a lot of the other more dramatic patinas that you get out there. But again, this was my first attempt and I'm not entirely sure the caliber of the metal that I'm working with here. And again, there's always going to be that element of randomness and chance that plays into applying a patina. But I'm really happy with the end result here. I do still need to go back through and polish this so that it looks a little bit less rough with the sealer, but in general, I'm really happy with how this turned out. And if you want to see more patina work on this channel, stay tuned because I have a big project in the works just as soon as I hear back from SM Keyboards. Anyway, that's going to do it for this one. Toss a thumbs up on the way out if you liked what you saw. Make sure you get subscribed and notified so you don't miss any of our content when it goes live. And if you feel like buying me a coffee to help us continue to make awesome content like this, check out the link to my coffee page down below. And if you made it this far into the video, thank you so much for watching. You're the real goats. Take care.